Hey, well, that's right. I'm here with uh, Professor David Cutler. He's been studying the economics of health reform uh, before the bill has passed and certainly over the past year since it's been going on. So, Professor Cutler, tell me, how have expectations changed over the past year with all the talk and rhetoric about this health reform bill? What we're now starting to see is the implementation and the implementation is going to go on for several years, so it's going to be a very lengthy process. I think overall it's been fairly successful, of course with a number of hiccups, anything this large is going to have hiccups, but the key parts so far have been the regulations on insurers and the medical loss ratios, what we saw last week with the accountable care organization regulations. And now let's talk of waivers, that's been a big topic lately. Is that a good thing or a bad thing when it comes to the economic implications of this bill? I think on net it's a good thing. What we're trying to do, what the bill is trying to do is to move people into better, more secure coverage and it's got a mechanism for doing that. That mechanism starts in a couple of years. Mm -hmm. So the question is what do you do in the interim? There are a number of employers that are providing benefits which aren't up to the generosity that people are expecting to have. And so the question is do you put them into a bad choice when we're still in the middle of a deep recession? Or do you say, look, let's hold off the implementation of that part for a little bit? And they've decided to hold off the implementation of that part for a bit, which I think is a quite sensible thing to do. There's also been debate about jobs. Is this going to help jobs or hurt jobs? I know you've done some research on that. What's your perspective on the impact this bill has on jobs? The central issue that's going to drive the jobs debate is whether this bill and other changes in the system can help to slow the growth of health care costs over time. And if it does, we'll create a lot of jobs. By a lot, my own estimates are on the range of 250,000 to 400,000 a year. 250,000 to 400,000 a year? That's correct. And how, uh, when, when would we start seeing those? Really, we would start to see them as soon as health costs slow. That is, if you look at what employers around the country say, they say, look, my health costs are going up and I just can't afford to hire more workers. I can't afford to do the kinds of things, investments that I would otherwise do. Not all employers, much of it has shifted into wages for workers, but in some occasions that shows up as reduced job hiring. As soon as we start to see that trend materially be affected, then you'll see employers start to hire additional people. The courts right now are considering whether or not to hold up this, this individual insurance mandate. If that is struck down, does the whole health bill unravel or is there still a way to keep this going without that personal mandate that you have to have insurance by a set date? There are two issues. One is, does a court overturn the entire bill because of that? The judge in Florida decided that the entire bill was unconstitutional. The judge in Virginia did not. The second is sort of substantively, which is, could you make the system work? if you didn't have a mandate. My belief is yes, but again, that, that, that's an issue where there's a lot of disagreement professionally, and there are some people who think you absolutely have to have the mandate. Some people think you don't have to have it, but it would help you. All right, great. Thank you, Professor Cutler.